We welcome everyone to this August 7th, 2023 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience or guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. This board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, and make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. Mr. President, I am afraid I'm going to have to interrupt you for just a moment because, as you see, we have a momentous event at our board meeting. Um, Ollie the Tiger has shown up. I think that he has um, done such a great job of helping to raise money for a very for our Navarro um, animal shelter, and he's he said he was ready to go home. He's had a statement to make, and now he's ready to go home. So our runaway tiger, I think he might have just needed a little me time. Yeah. Um, our runaway tiger is ready to go home, so we're going to provide him a police escort so that we know he is he will get home safely and he will be ready for the students tomorrow to welcome them back to Corsicana High School. So, Officer Cuellar, are you ready for our escort? Okay. <laughs> and also, I need to explain to Ollie, he can't be a board member. He wasn't elected, he hadn't been sworn in, so he didn't get to vote. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Take him back take him back to his owner. On. And he can take this one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was for a good cause. All right, so review of the preliminary budget and consideration of raises for the 2023, 23, and 24 school year. So one of the things that I did look up was um, some of our st across the state, what the average um, pay was for districts our size for teachers. And so with this raise, what it would do for our teaching staff is to be at least $3,224 above what other districts our size are paying um, at different levels. Up to um, our zero year teachers would be making $4,540 above what would be the average um, for teachers with zero years. Up to 20 years, which would be 3776 above what other districts were paying, the average other district of our size. So the median um, for the state 
um, is 59.626, and of course, the Kenna ISD, the median salary would be 61.372. So. I feel like Corsicana is a very attractive district for so many reasons. Um, this is an excellent pay scale and it's an increase for our teachers. But also, um, we would, in this budget, and it's what Stephanie just presented, covers that additional health care um, cost. And that's significant. Um, it's not, um, it is money in your pocket. It's just not there in the dollars that you take home. But when you are ill or there's something um, devastating that happens within your family, it's a huge benefit for our staff to have this medical insurance. And can you tell me, um, teacher insurance premiums are significant, correct? I mean, like, how much do y'all pay monthly? I mean, or we pay 100%, but I know we're one of the few districts in the whole state that pay, but, sure. but what number is that that they are getting each month? Four year. About four hundred sixty five dollars a month. So we're giving them the $467 a month. I personally don't know of another district that pays 100% um, and I've been looking. So I think that's a good point to make is in addition to this 3% and more raise that we're giving that we're able to still provide our employees with full benefit of health insurance. And that's about $5,500 a year. Per employee. Per employee. In, in addition to the life insurance policy, correct? Yeah, the $50,000 life insurance policy, So if we're looking at this correctly, the um, this is going to cost us an additional $1.6 plus million, and we're still we're able to be on budget and be able to do this for our staff. Mm -hmm. And I know that we had discussed another question that's a little difficult to understand or to compute the amounts that are going in because they're percentages and some of them are dollars and uh, per hour things like that are we going to be able to give them some type of information um, directly to them that tells them what their rate they got a three percent or they got a three dollar an hour or whatever okay i think what we talked about was we provide each uh, employee with a statement of how much they would be making for the 23 24 school year great great so it includes everyone from custodial to grounds to transportation um, all the different pay scales are adjusted up um, so that they'll they will be seeing significant raises in their salaries as well um, and then one last piece of information is about our tax rate so we did find out today that um, our 22 23 tax rate was a dollar 16 um, and it will be going to 86 cents which is about a 30 cents difference so if you know our house if your house is valued at $100,000 uh, you're going to see about $300 of savings per year on your school taxes. Would you say that rate it's dropping to 86 cents? 86. Yes ma'am. So that's about a 30 cent drop. Mm -hmm. And just to make that clear we were given that tax rate. We are not allowed to just come up with a tax rate on our own. We're not like the city or the county. We have to do what we're given, correct? So the process is that we, well, Brian really receives um, the information from our taxing entities, and Brian takes that, does calculations and we receive the number back from TEA that's approved or not approved. And so um, what we have are, are our proposed rates with TEA approval now. And we just received those the end of last week, maybe Friday. Yeah, this morning, well. yeah. okay. And I know there's been a lot of discussion within the community, community about no new tax rate, but school districts are not allowed to go to a new tax rate, correct? Right, okay. However, we are able to, with the hard work of being fiscally responsible here at this district, able to continue to lower the tax rate significantly while still taking care of our employees. I think that's a big thing to say because we know of a lot of districts that are accepting unbalanced budgets. And we are able to not do that. And I think that anybody that's listening, that is significant that we're able to do that with a balanced budget. That's so, why it's important to have a, a board that looks at everything and, and you know, we take in consideration that we don't just go and, you know, just go and do things. We, we, we look at everything. Very conservative. 
important. Yeah. Know, take care of our people. All right, so let's just make sure we have this right. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of people, so I just want to make sure that the just for everybody's knowledge, right? So we're going to do a two or two to three percent raise, depending upon your level of service as a teacher. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're, years of experience for two percent is zero to five for two percent, and then all others are three. Okay. Educational aid. We're also going to increase them significantly. Yes, sir. Um, for 22-23, they started out at 14765 They'll start out at 18000 I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know we were in budget discussion last time, but were we going to do something different with the kid, the, 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 the educational aids that were like SPED? We talked about, we talked about we that? We did. We talked about giving them a stipend That's if they a were a, okay. a SPED paraprofessional. Yes, okay. ma'am. Right. So custodians are, went, went from what? They went from uh, starting out at eight dollars and eighty-eight cents to thirteen dollars per hour. Okay. That started zero to five. Yes. Well, um, oh, zero to. Uh, that's, that's zero. 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 And then where we were for twenty-five years was nineteen dollars and thirty-three cents, and they'll now go to thirty dollars per hour. And they were nineteen thirty. If it was at twenty-five years, yes, ma'am. Grounds. Uh, they they were starting for zero years eight or nine dollars and forty-one cents. They're now at eleven dollars and fifty cents, and at twenty-five years, they were at nineteen dollars and eighty-six cents, and we're at twenty-five dollars per hour. Then maintenance. Previously, we were at fifteen dollars and sixty-eight cents for zero years. They're going to see sixteen dollars and fifteen cents, and then the, at twenty-five years, twenty-six dollars and eighty cents, where we were at uh, twenty-six dollars. If y'all want these comparisons, we can email all that to you yeah. tomorrow. Okay. You like to have those comparisons? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am, I can send all that. Just want to make sure that, you know, we got it all. Let's go on through the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Mechanics. Go ahead, Stephanie, if you don't mind. Uh, then we have mechanics. And um, they've seen a 3% raise. So twenty three sixty nine was where they were at zero years. Now it'll be twenty dollars, twenty four dollars and forty cents. Our bus drivers, they were at twenty dollars per hour with no, with um, zero years. They will go to twenty dollars and forty cents. They've seen a three percent as well. And then our um, cafeteria staff went from nine dollars and forty one cents for if you're a, um, a cook to eleven ninety one starting out. And then um, managers will see a $2 raise, and assistant managers seen a $1.50 raise. And I can send all the comparisons in this afternoon. Perfect. Thank and you. All other staff, 3%. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. So, team, well, I think we've been fiscally responsible, so. In light of this information, do we? I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the raises according to the pay scales presented and to approve 2 and 3% for all other staff, except for child nutrition, whose increased pay scale was approved at a previous board meeting. Second. Here we get a motion and a second to approve the raises according to the pay scales presented and to approve the 2 to 3% raise for other staff except for child nutrition whose increased pay scale was approved the previous previous board meeting all those in favor say aye aye all as opposed say no ayes have it and we've approved the raises for the pay scales thank you thank you all right. all right we're moving on to the tasby delegate and alternate so each year um, when the board attends the uh, TASA TASB conference, um, there's an opportunity for us to have a representative to have our voice heard in the delegate assembly. Um, they set priorities and um, have a significant discussion about the future of um, boards and elections in the state of Texas. 
I probably cannot speak nearly as um, well about this as Ms. Kelly, who's been our representative for many years. Um, but it's a, it's a significant position, and it's something that um, I'm proud to send someone to represent Corsicana ISD. I don't know if there's anything you want to add about all the work that you do. Yes. If you truly want to be an advocate for public education, being a de delegate is very important. And for me, serving as a delegate, I have learned so much about the board members that across the state that really, really advocate for our, our public ed. I mean, I've, I've met some board members that have served and they've served. All right, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, members of the board, uh, I'm here to request approval of the 23-24 copy of the Student Code of Conduct. Uh, I know you've got copies that, that we had given you, and you, you can see in the highlighted versions there's a few changes that we had to make, not many, but there are uh, three main changes that I just kind of wanted to graze back over uh, before you vote on it. Uh, first one is uh, House Bill 1427 that expands the definition of harassment to include uh, that through a temporary or disposable telephone or number provided by an internet application. Uh, we added that and then there was House Bill 3928 that amends Chapter 37 that requires us to provide information to a student's parent or person standing in uh, upon a student being recommended or placed in a DAP uh, process of their rights for special education uh, testing. Uh, we've already got that process worked out with our 
uh, DAP uh, committee and our DAP personnel that during the intake meetings we're going to provide all that to the parents uh, through our SPED department. And the last one is House Bill uh, 114 that amends Chapter 37. This is kind of the, the popular one this year. Uh, long story short, it, it uh, makes a DAP placement uh, mandatory for any student that uses an electronic cigarette, e-cig, or vape on campus. Um, we were all, we already had policy that we were upholding for uh, e-cigs or vapes that had THC in them. Uh, we go through the expulsion process and a mandatory DAP placement. This mandates the the vapes that that have tobacco uh, in them as well. So we we put some processes in place uh, that we're hoping to move forward with once. Once uh, we can get you to approve the code of conduct here in our handbooks. Um, so for an initial placement for a student that has a standard uh, e-cig or vape on campus that does not contain THC, uh, we're, we're looking at making a 10-day placement uh, with a possible five-day review upon completion of a, uh, a vaping course. That, that we've come up with uh, with the help of Ms. Bork, our lead emotional support counselor. And on step two, if a student has a second offense, uh, then it would be 10 days flat with sessions continued with Ms. Bork. Uh, upon a third offense, it would be 15 days uh, accompanied with parent meetings and continued sessions. Uh, and, 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 and monitoring of that student. On a fourth offense, then we're going to recommend them to the Discipline Alternative Education Committee uh, and come up with an individualized placement slash program, uh, just depending on the needs of, of the student at, the, at that point in time. If they get to four, then there's, there's, there's an issue there, uh, some form or fashion, whether it be some form of addiction or other issues that may accompany that. So I feel good about that process, uh, the principles. And I and Dr. Frost came up came up with that, and that's our that's our plan moving forward with that. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Posters? I don't know why not. Oh, of that information, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Because it's in their face, they'll see. I agree. I agree. Yes, ma'am. Any questions on any of that? All right. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the student code of conduct. I move we approve the 23-24 student code of conduct as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the 2023-24 student code of conduct. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Eyes have it, and we have approved the 2023-24 student code of conduct as presented. Okay, uh, does anyone have any additional agenda items for the August? It's actually going to be 28th. Remember, it was going to be 21st. We're now doing 28th. For so, taxes and the posting. For taxes and the posting. So we're, we had to move it back. Because we didn't hear back from TEA. Because we didn't hear back from TEA, so we've got to have the, the tax rate now legal so that will be taken care of so does anything is if you don't have anything today we still have over almost two and a half weeks to get anything to myself or dr frost i just would like to add something to the agenda for the 28th we're going to have a special celebration for the region 12 and one of the finalists for the school boards of the year which is, of course, Ken ISD Honor Board. We are very, very pleased, very proud. Um, many, many things I'm proud of this board for, but I think the teamwork and the focus on our students and the great work you do, it is wonderful to see you honored. And uh, we're going to represent Region 12, and um, we're going to do our very best in that competition. And it's just such an honor and um, a pleasure to work with this board. So thank you for all you do, and congratulations on being a state honor board. But we can't do any of that without the best state staff in Texas. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So it's all about y'all. Yeah. So like I said, in my speech, 
It's all about everybody in this room. Sure it's about everybody here. So if we thank you all. It's not just us. All right. Audience for guests. So, Mr. Dean Grayson. Or Dion? Dion, I'm sorry. I had a lot to say, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, we just want to make sure we just, we, give you your space. We, we've satisfied you. Can okay. I say something about Mr. Grayson? I just want to thank you for your leadership and for how dedicated you are to the district, especially to our campuses, our custodial department. Um, people like you don't come along every day, and I just want to thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, we are going to go into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you.